This is Huawei's latest flagship phone, the Huawei P60 Pro, and in a way, it's their strongest launch in quite a few years. There is so much that Huawei has packed into this phone. Well, let's first get the unboxing out of the way and then take a look at everything the P60 Pro has to offer. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. So this here is the box the P60 Pro comes in. We've got XMage, Kunlun Glass, and of course, App Gallery branding prominently. Barring that, it's your standard Huawei phone box with the model name mentioned to the sides. Let's go ahead and open it up. Once we do, we are greeted by the P60 Pro itself, removing that protective cover. Man, this back looks nice. It's got a marble kind of finish, reminds me of kitchen countertops. Pretty funny if you already see camera arrays as stubs and that was a stupid joke, so I'll see myself out. Now, seriously, Huawei has gone for a pearl-esque finish. They've used actual powdered pearl for this back and as a result, no two backs are exactly alike. So if you do buy this phone, you're getting something that's unique, one of a kind. Huawei is calling this the Rococo pearl texture design and this back, it feels nice to touch. While it's still slippery, you don't see it catching fingerprints or smudges at all. Now, if you want something a little more subtle, they also do offer this phone in black. Now, regardless of the color you end up choosing, the P60 Pro is pretty compact with a thickness of just 8.3 millimeters, a weight of about 200 grams, and a width under 75 millimeters. Now, this makes the phone very easy to wield. In hand, it feels solid, it feels comfortable. Beating up, there's also an IP68 rating on this. Now here's a quick look around the device. We have an accented power key and the volume rockers to the right, the secondary mic, IR blaster and secondary speakers sit up top. The left's clean save for the antenna band by which you know the sides are metal. And to the bottom we have the SIM tray, a USB Type-C port, the primary speaker and microphone. Huawei remains one of the last brands to support memory expansion on their flagships. But this support does come with an asterisk since it's not micro SD, but their own proprietary nano memory card that they're supporting. So this tray here, it can take either two SIM cards or a SIM and a nano memory card. Now to the front, Huawei has used Kunlun glass for protection and the bezels are very even. If you notice the panel here, it curves on all four sides. To the left and right, we have steep curves, whereas to the top and bottom, you've got a more gentle curve. Personally, I like this a lot. It feels nice when you're, say, pulling down the notification bar or swiping up from the bottom. Now, this here is a 6.67 inch display. It's 1.5K resolution and the tech is OLED. Now, this means it's pretty sharp with a 444 pixels per inch pixel density. It's got LTPO technology, so it can vary the refresh between 1 and 120 hertz as needed to conserve battery. Now, under this display lies an optical fingerprint scanner, which seems to work quite well. The other biometric option is via the 13 megapixel selfie camera that's found in this hole punch up top. Selfies themselves, they seem decent, well detailed. The field of view here is quite wide. If you want to, you can get cropped in shots like this. But if you need to take group selfies, Huawei does support that too. Also note that Huawei is one of very few Chinese brands to support 4K video recording via the selfie camera. Now, before we move on to the next thing, let's actually get the unboxing part of this video done with. So coming back to the box, next we have a SIM ejector tool and this insert is where you'd usually find the quick start guide, warranty information booklets, etc. But since this is not a retail box, I only get the soft case. And finally, we have an 88 watt Huawei supercharger, which lets you use a Type-C to Type-C or a Type-A to Type-C cable to charge. The latter is what's included in the box with orange accents. Now Huawei's charging works a little differently to what we've been seeing so far. Now say you're plugging the phone in at night before you go to sleep. Just plug it in and let it charge. It charges a little slower. But say you're in a hurry and you need a quick top up. Then once you plug it in, just tap and hold this. Now it's turbo charging. And this way you can get from zero to 50 in just 10 minutes. Neat, right? Now there is also support for wireless charging at up to 50 watts. And despite the P60 Pro looking compact, it still has a solid 4815 milliamp hour battery on the inside. Talking about what's on the inside, this phone is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 SoC. It's not the latest chip due to Huawei's issues, but it's still an excellent, excellent chip capable of running anything thrown at it. Now this is a 4G version of the 8 Plus Gen 1 and it's paired with 8 or 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 or 512 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, which as we saw earlier can be further expanded using Huawei's nano memory cards. Now on the software side of things, this phone's running on Android 13 with Huawei's MUI 13.1 on top. The interface seems fast and responsive, though the lack of Google Play services remains an issue. 
Now, there are workarounds for Google's own first-party apps, and for the rest, Huawei's App Gallery has been steadily growing, and most apps you need are available either on App Gallery itself or using Pedal Search these days. In fact, I have a detailed video on the state of apps on Huawei phones that I'll leave a link to in the description below. Do check it out if you're interested on picking up this phone or any Huawei phone for that matter in 2023. Now, the highlight of this phone, given it is a P-series Huawei after all, it's gotta be these cameras right here. The P60 Pro sports three of them to the back. Now, the primary is a 48 megapixel sensor that's paired with an optically stabilized variable aperture lens. Now, variable aperture lenses are becoming more and more common these days, but with Huawei, it's not just that you can switch between f4 and f1.4, which beat it up is the widest aperture you can get on any smartphone camera. So it's not just that you can switch between these two apertures, but you have 10 different levels to choose from. A whole lot of granularity is provided here. And the difference in aperture lets you decide how shallow a depth of field you need. As you can see here, the difference, it's quite noticeable. And at f1.4, the images have a very shallow depth of field with strong background blur. While at f4, you do get a whole lot more in focus. Huawei's also added anti-shake hardware to make sure you can capture images of moving objects without blur. The images themselves, they seem great, very well detailed with accurate colors and excellent dynamic range. Next up, we have another 48 megapixel sensor, a 3.5X telephoto lens that's also optically stabilized and has an f2.1 aperture. This does extremely well. Okay, let me show you something. This is the ultra wide. Let's zoom all the way in 100X and take a picture of the number plate. And this is what we end up with. You can actually read the numbers after a 100X zoom. Impressive, right? Regular, 3.5X optical, 10X hybrid, 20x and you still have usable social media shareable images at 20x this camera setup it's quite versatile even from an interface perspective huawei has put in a lot of effort now it's not just the different modes that you can switch single-handed but even commonly used settings are accessible without needing to switch to both hands like for example see how easy it is to switch the resolution when shooting video moving on we have a 13 megapixel ultra wide this one does a fair job and it's got autofocus, so the P60 Pro, it does switch to it for close-ups. But once again, check this out. Go close and the P60 Pro switches to ultra wide, super macro, but now tap this macro icon and it switches to telephoto macro. Basically, Huawei's got the telephoto lens to focus up close. So you can get macro shots with it. I really love how these images turned out and the results, as you can see, they're different from your regular macro shots. They look quite beautiful. Videos top out at 4K 60, and the results again are pretty good. Stable and detailed footage is what you get. Especially close up shots with that F1.4 aperture, they look brilliant. So, guys, this is the Huawei P60 Pro. This phone launched in China for 69.88 RMB. Though, as of shooting this video, I don't know the UAE pricing, uh, but I should, however, know the pricing before the time this video goes live. So, I will add it in the description below. Do check that space. Now for now, let me know what do you think about the P60 Pro? Love it, hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you're already subscribed, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on my future content. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.